play heated up on day two of the U.S. Soccer Region 1 Championships in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, as teams vied for position to advance with one day left to play before the knockout rounds. After a solid 2-0 victory over Rhode Island yesterday, under-15 girls FC Delco 95 from Eastern PA rallied from a goal down versus West Virginia champions WVUSC Shocks to tie 1-1. Shocks grabbed the early lead in the seventh minute on a goal from Hannah Abraham, and that lead held strong until the last three minutes of the game when Delco found the equalizer through a Rebecca Sherry tally to salvage a point and stay in contention to advance to the knockout rounds. Victoria Carter helped Bayside FC of Rhode Island rebound from an opening day loss with two goals to lead her team to a 2-1 victory over Rochester FC of Western New York and keep them alive for the semifinals. Carter opened the scoring in the 18th minute as the half ended with Bayside in front. Alexandria Palaconi equalized for Rochester in the 53rd, but Carter's second in the 65th proved to be the game winner as both teams still have a chance to grab the top seed in the group tomorrow. East Meadow Sparks from Eastern New York have yet to be beaten with two draws after yesterday's nil-nil tie with FSAFC West Hartford Premier from Connecticut. But with U.S. Soccer National League under-15 girls champion SAC United Premier from Maryland grabbing a second win today, SAC has locked up the top seed in the group to advance to the semifinals regardless of the result of their match tomorrow with East Meadow Sparks. It was a great game. You know, Connecticut is a, always a strong state. They had a really good team. I think the game was very competitive, went back and forth. You know, the 0-0 zero, zero is, is a good result, but we were hoping for a little bit more. I'm actually, like, really proud of myself and proud of my team because we made it this far, winning State Cup to get here. It's just, like, a big ac accomplishment. I'm having a really good time. The under-16 boys group C will come to a dramatic conclusion tomorrow as all four teams are 1-1, one one, with just one goal separating the teams in goal differential. After a loss on day one, PDA Harks of New Jersey took command of the group today with a 3-1 victory over Beachside of Connecticut. Colin Stripling notched the opening goal for PDA in the 10th minute, and Daniel Weldon increased the lead to two before halftime. Hunter Padilla added a third for PDA in the 72nd, but Peter Zenner grabbed it right back for Beachside two minutes later to keep Beachside within two. The PDA defense held firm the rest of the way to deliver the 3-1 to one win and give PDA the advantage headed into the final day of preliminary play. Throwing Group C into a logjam was Bruno United from Rhode Island's 2-0 victory over Pachuca Dragons from Maryland. Pachuca failed to take advantage after an opening win as Coleman Clark put Bruno ahead in the 14th minute and Joseph Jennings sealed the game in the 80th for the Rhode Island side. All four teams still have the ability to claim the top spot tomorrow and advance to the semifinal. Dirty bit. HSC Heat of Delaware couldn't put New Hampshire Classics away after twice taking the lead in their 2-2 draw. Moha Hale tallied twice for HSC with the first in the 23rd. But Classics leveled in the 31st from John Niddle to head into the break 1-1. One one. Hale grabbed the lead for HSC again in the 48th, but once again, the Classics clawed back. After two draws in the under-16 boys group B yesterday and the HSC Classics tying again today, Northport Cal Harbor Sound from Eastern New York jumped ahead in the standings with a 1-0 victory over Reston Knights Football Club from Virginia. Ryan Egan converted the game winner off an indirect set piece inside the Reston penalty box in the 16th minute, and that would prove to be the difference as Reston was eliminated from contention. Well, they were a good solid team, but we, had, we worked very hard and like put forth a solid effort, so we took over the game and dominated the entire time. Well, there was a foul in the box, so and it was an indirect kick, so we had one of my players touch it, and then I just put it in the back of the net. I think all these boys have uh, great skills, can play at the high level, but um, in the end uh, it will give them an avenue to get into school later on down the road. Most of the boys on our team, I would definitely say, could all play uh, at the college level, and that's, our, that's what we're looking forward uh, to.